Hi guys, my name is Karthik and I am from idraautomation.com and welcome to another video for automation testing with CodeCept.js, Puppeteer and Playwright course. And in this section, we are going to be talking about automation testing with CodeCept.js with Puppeteer. And in this video, we are going to talk about PDD with CodeCept.js. So we have been talking a lot about CodeCept.js with Puppeteer in our earlier videos of this section of this course. And in this video, we are going to talk about how we can achieve the behavioral driven development with CodeCept.js. So again, we are going to reboot our discussion on even more detail on, on CodeCept.js starting this video. The reason being there are so many cool things which are available in CodeCept.js and we are going to be discussing about that. So the BDD is something we have already discussed a lot in this whole course, like how we can achieve behavioral driven development with Puppeteer using Cucumber.js. But in this video, we're going to see how we can do exactly the same thing with CodeCept.js as well. As you can see, this is like a very normal scenario that we have wrote even earlier in our previous videos of, of this course. And again, I'm going to be doing exactly the same thing. So I'm going to be writing a scenario, as you can see in here, something like this. And I'm going to create a step definition for that. And I will see how we can easily create that with CodeCept.js with a much efficient manner. So let's quickly see everything in action and understand how things work. So for that, I'm going to flip to my Chrome browser right now. All right, so now you can see I'm in my Chrome browser for the CodeCept.js, which is CodeCept.io. And this is the page for the behavioral driven development, as you can see in here. So there is explanation on how, how BDD actually works and all those stuff, which is pretty cool. But the one thing that we really need to notice is how it actually works with CodeCept.js itself. As you can see, this syntax, the npx CodeCept.js Kirkin of init is something very, very interesting that we need to be really, really caring about. So this is where the framework which will actually invoke things for you very, very easily. Again, guys, all these things that you can see in here are pretty much exactly like how we did in our Cucumber.js. It's the same concept. There is no change on that. So I'm not really going to be talking about a lot of detail on all these things, but I just want you to be aware that CodeCept.js also has got the exact same thing that we actually have within Cucumber.js. And if you're going to be completely switching to CodeCept.js, then probably you need to be aware of how this is actually working. So I'm actually going to jump into our existing project, which is nothing but the Udemy CodeCept.js of Puppeteer, which is the source code that they attached in this section. So I'm going to go in here and I'm going to open the terminal this time and within this terminal I'm actually going to be running this particular syntax. So you can either directly create a folder called features and then a steps folder and within this features folder you can create a feature like login or something like that and then you can create a steps folder and write the step definitions and all those things you can do by yourself like hand coding but instead of doing all those things you can also call this particular command the npx CodeCept.js gherkin of init, which will actually create the structure for you. So as you can see, there is no folder or the steps folder within our project right now. All I'm going to do is I'm just going to be running this particular command, which is going to do all those great things for us. But before running that, I also need to do the npm install because I actually removed the uh, node underscore module folder. All right, and then I'm going to run this npx CodeCept.js gherkin of init command right now. And you can see that it has actually created the structure for us, the features folder, and there is a step definitions folder. And within the features folder, we have a basic feature, as you can see in here. And there is this step definitions folder which has got the steps.js file pretty cool right so now we have got everything that we really require to run our bdd based scenario from CodeCept.js. so now what i'm going to do is we're going to be writing a very very super simple scenario that we actually saw in our slide which is pretty much exactly like this one so as you can see, it's going to perform a login operation, like pretty much how we do with like a uh, given login with username and password that we did in our earlier video of this section. This one, I fill 
uh, username as admin and password as password these things this is exactly the same thing I'm doing in here and then I'm gonna click the login button then I should see the login happened or not right so we need to generate the step definitions here but we actually have a structure over here and you can see that the template actually also shows us there is an I being injected and this I is something we can now use something like this over here in the step definition which is pretty cool this is exactly the same thing that we did in our earlier video with CodeCept.js so I'm gonna be exactly doing the same thing over here as well so the first one is login with the username and password so you can see that this time we are gonna be using the table here again guys the table is gonna be the exact same syntax for the table that is there with the cucumber JS so we can just make use of the same concept here so I'm just gonna put the table over here and you can see that the intelligence will little bit not work this time which is okay so I probably can write one more so yeah. uh, K1 I navigate to the application something like that and I'm just gonna copy this thing and I'm gonna paste it over here I know that the step definitions are gonna be sitting in one single file as of now which is okay because we don't really have to complicate this particular code the whole idea is that you need to get the idea that there is something called as BDD which is also available over here uh, in CodeCept.js so I'm just gonna go to the login.html like how we did in our earlier video there we go and then given I log in with the username and password so for doing that actually we need to create something called as cells as for the constant and within the table there is an option called as rows uh, where I can get all the cells value out from that and again I'm passing the row as one because it's a zero base index so this is zero which is the name of this particular column and the one is the admin and pass that's what it's going to be entering so I'm just going to get that and I'm just going to perform the exact same thing in here as well so I fill uh, if we go in here we can see that it's going to be the uh, username and the password so I'm just going to type these value but instead of the value from in here we're just going to use the cells of zero dot value this will actually uh, get the value for us for the username and then for the password we can get the value out from cells of one so this way we get uh, the login operation as well and then we have and I click the login button so I can just go over here we can just copy this paste it over here which we can just copy from this one and we can paste it over here so now you can see that we're actually building the step definitions for all the operation that we were performing this particular feature file the login feature file uh, and then we can try to execute this particular code and see how it works so basically I'm not really gonna be validating this particular operation because again it's gonna be straightforward guys you just need to copy paste from here and everything will work fine without any problem so I'm not gonna be doing that for now maybe I can just leave it for you guys to do it so I'm just gonna leave it and now I'm just gonna run this particular code and we'll see what's gonna happen so now if I execute this particular piece of code something like this you can see that it actually executes this particular piece of code there you go and now it's also executing the another scenario for us there you go so now you can see that it actually performed this perform login operation for us in here this one and it also performed the rest of the operation which is nothing but the login underscore test operation which is this one right so the scenario was executed successfully over here and the normal login operation was executed as well so this way we can see that our PDD based operation is also happening with CodeCept.js much much easily and there is no learning curve for you to implement this particular code because it's going to be exactly the same way how we did with our cucumber.js and also 
the coding is also pretty much exactly the same like how we just did in our earlier video with the normal course of JS syntax and you don't even have to worry about the IE like how it is coming from because you are anyways going to be injecting that and then you're going to be using them everywhere and again we have also touched a little bit about the advanced concept on the PDD based scenario with tables it's also working fine without any problem so everything is pretty good with course of JS meet you in our next video